Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah, Kudash. Double honors to the head apostle slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear or whether they forbear. All right, and this is going to be a, um, a little quick uh, history special on something called uh, drown towns all right and uh i seen i got i got the the topic from watching another brother's videos uh, his name is uh, gms kabar dama all right and he was going into one that was uh, known locally where he's from in north carolina all right now i'm from atlanta georgia and this is the place that uh this place that uh, is known as um oscarville georgia all right about an hour north all right it was it was a town that was destroyed Okay, and they 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 built a lake over it, a man-made lake. Okay, and um, we're gonna go ahead and, and watch the clip on it, and then as always, of course, I'm gonna bring out some scriptures. And Lord's will is edifying to the elect. All right, but it's an interesting uh, story, pretty sad, man. But this has happened pretty much all throughout the United States. All right, you know, uh, uh, whenever there was some kind of a uh, uh, so-called black settlement, all right, where where so-called Negroes were thriving. All right, this is pretty much usually the, the common outcome that would happen. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Not the only city underwater, as right below the serene water of Lake Lanier is a land that was once thriving with human activities, Oscarville in Georgia. Lake Lanier in Georgia is a popular destination for weekend getaways, attracting visitors with its abundant fishing, boating, and other recreational activities. The lake spans over 38,000 acres and has over 692 miles of shoreline. It is located in the northern part of Georgia and serves as a major source of water supply for the city of Atlanta. However, what many people don't know is that the lake has a dark past. It sits on top of the ruins of Oscarville, a thriving African-American community that was destroyed as far back as 1912. Oscarville was a small black community located in the northeastern part of Forsyth County, Georgia. The community was established in the late 1800s and was home to over 100 black families. The residents of Oscarville were hardworking farmers, carpenters, and other tradespeople who were able to establish a self-sufficient community despite the oppressive Jim Crow laws at the time. In September, two alleged assaults against white women were reported in the county. Two black men were arrested, along with four accomplices. Shortly after, the body of a white resident was found, and several black residents were named as suspects to provide safety. One suspect was transferred, but a mob of angry white residents gathered outside the jail. They seized and beat another suspect to death before hanging him in the town square. After the trials and executions, a group of white men, known as Knight writers began a campaign of terror against the black residents of Oscarville. They burned homes, churches, and schools, forcing black families to flee the area. More than a thousand residents were displaced in the aftermath of the violence. The land where Oscarville once stood was eventually purchased by the Army Corps of Engineers, who built Lake Lanier on top of the remains of the destroyed community. The construction of the lake began in the 1950s and was completed in the 1960s. The lake is now a popular destination for recreation and serves as a major source of hydroelectric power for the region. Today, Today, there are reports of eerie occurrences and ghost sightings around the lake, adding to its already haunting history. Many visitors to the lake have reported seeing strange lights, hearing ghostly voices, and feeling a sense of unease in certain areas. Some believe that the ghosts of the former residents of Oscarville are still present at the lake, haunting the place where their homes and communities once stood. The story of Oscarville and its destruction is a horrifying example of the violence and depression encountered in African American communities throughout American history. However, efforts are being made to preserve the memory of Oscarville and honor the lives of those who were lost. The Black Student Union at the University of North Georgia has created a scholarship in the memory of the victims of the Oscarville lynching, and there are ongoing efforts to uncover more information about the community and its history. In recent years, there has been a renewed interest in the history of Oscarville and other similar communities in the South. Organizations like the Georgia Trust for Historic Preservation have worked to document the history of Black communities in Georgia and advocate for their preservation. The Forsyth County Historical Society has also taken steps to recognize the history of Oscarville and other lost communities in the area. Despite the efforts to preserve the memory of Oscarville, the community's history remains. Okay, all right. So that's the end of the clip. And uh, let's go ahead and bring out some scriptures. All right, and see, man, this is, once again, this was something that was a common outcome. Whenever so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians tried to set up something good for themselves. All right, this was a common so-called outcome right here. All right, 
And this is the reason why, you know, we are, 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 are chanting this place down, man. Or we are, are looking forward to the destruction of the land of our captivity of Babylon the Great. All right, America. So this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 51. All right, it's a, it's a chapter that goes into the destruction of Babylon the Great. And it says, uh, Jeremiah 51 and 35. It says, the violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon shall the inhabitant of Zion say. Okay, and the inhabitant of Zion is speaking of the Israelites. All right, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. Okay, because, you know, literally the violence was done unto us. All right, we are our forefathers. They had us in captivity. All right, they had us in derision. All right, we are the reproach, the proverb, the byword. All right. Okay, it says, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea shall Jerusalem say. And Chaldea, all right, is pretty much a representative of Babylon the Great. All right, the Chaldeans were witches and warlocks that, that ran ancient Babylon. Okay, just as the witches and warlocks, the people who run the society now, run the daughter of Babylon, which is America. All right, let's, let's read it in the NLT. Jeremiah 51 and 35, New Living Translation. It says, make Babylon suffer as she made us suffer, saith the people of Zion. Okay, that's exactly how we feel. And that's a righteous thing. Okay, it says, make the people of Babylonia pay for spilling our blood, says Jerusalem. All right. And that's exactly, you know, uh, pretty much what the Lord is getting ready to do. All right. He's getting ready to bring, deliver that justice. Okay. Why? Because they have dealt very treacherously all right, with the children of Israel. Okay, they have greatly offended. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and get this right quick. Zechariah chapter 2. Okay. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 7. Okay, it says, Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, After the, after the glory hath he sent me into the nations which spoiled you. For he that touches you toucheth the apple of his eye. All right, and they did a lot of damage to us, man. All right, and the Lord is pissed off about that. All right. Let's get this right quick. Ezekiel 25th chapter. All right, let's see. All right, Ezekiel chapter 25 and verse 12 in the KJV. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and hath greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it. And I will make it a desolate, make it desolate from Taman and they of the Dan shall fall by the sword. All right. So the Lord is saying, I'm going to put that, that heavy judgment upon Edom. OK. And who is Edom? All right. Once again, uh, the, the daughter of Babylon all right, is being ran by Esau Edom. OK. It says, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, Jacob. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord. All right. And this is, you know, this is according to prophecy. Okay. Why? Because once again, all right, they dealt very treacherously with us. All right. Isaiah 33 and 1. Okay. It says, woe to thee that spoilest and thou wast not spoiled. And dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. And when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. O Lord, be gracious unto us, all right? The Israelites, we have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. Okay, why? Because this devil's getting ready to come back with that same spirit, all right? Sleazy E. All right. And the Lord, that's the thing about it. See, he's trying to raise up evil all right, to destroy us. All right. But it's all going to return back upon him. OK, why? Because the Lord, he's seen all the things that they've done to the children of Israel. All right. And he's going to give a recompense for their wickedness. All right. Let's go ahead and get that right quick. Ezekiel 35th chapter. All right. Ezekiel 35 and. Let's see, verse one, okay, it says, moreover, matter of fact, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in the NLT, okay, it, it says, a, it's titled, A Message for Edom, all right, who is Esau Edom? 
Today is the so-called white man. Again, a message came to me from the Lord, son of man, turn and face Mount Seir and prophesy against its people. Okay, so it's not it's not an actual mountain. All right. <laughs> it's talking about the people. Okay, the people, the descendants of Esau it says, give them this message from the sovereign Lord. I am your enemy, O Mount Seir, and I will raise my fist against you to destroy you completely. I will demolish your cities and make you desolate. Then you will know that I am the Lord. It says your eternal hatred for the people of Israel led you to butcher them when they were helpless, when I had already punished them for all their sins. All right. As surely as I live, says the sovereign Lord, since you show no distaste for blood, I will give you a bloodbath of your own. Your turn has come. I will make Mount Seir utterly desolate, killing off all who try to escape and any who return. Whew, fire, man. All right, man. Hey, that's what the Lord's getting ready to do, man. He's getting ready to bring that, that, that serious judgment. I will fill your mountains with the dead. Your hills, your valleys, and your ravines will be filled with people slaughtered by the sword. I will make you desolate forever. Your cities will never be rebuilt. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Okay? And I love that. I'm going to get in the KJV. I'm going to get that verse 5 and 6. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. So we had already been punished. The Lord had already, you know, uh, satisfied his wrath against us. And what did they do? They kept on shedding our blood, kept on oppressing us, and continue to until this very day. All right. And a lot of a lot of our people have become comfortable. All right. You know, woe to them that are in ease in Zion. They become comfortable all right, in Babylon the Great, but they're getting ready to see that that spirit of the dragon, the spirit of the serpent, Esau, Edom, okay, is getting ready to rise back up, and they're going to do a whole lot of killing, okay, and it's all the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right, this is the punishment against the two-thirds, okay, but continuing on, Ezekiel 35 and 6, therefore, as I live, saith the Lord Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee, sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee, okay, that's exactly what they have coming their way okay and once again why is the lord doing this because the lord is a righteous judge all right and according to the law the land has to be cleansed cleansed salakia all right let's get this numbers chapter 35 and verse 33 this is according to the law all right and it reads it says so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are for blood it defileth the land all right it says, and the land cannot be cleansed by the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Let's get that in the NLT. Okay. Numbers 35 and 33. It says, this will ensure that the land where you live will not be polluted. For murder pollutes the land. And no sacrifice except the execution of the murderer can purify the land from murder. All right. And Babylon and Greece is going to be utterly destroyed, made desolate. All right. But the whole earth, all right, the whole earth has to be cleansed from the blood. Okay, the blood that has been shed by murder. Okay, Esau has went around the earth murdering, all right, graping, spoiling, all right, millions and millions, countless amounts of people. Okay, so the whole earth is going to be cleansed by way of nuclear fire. He's going to melt, all right, he's going to melt Esau and all of their habitations. As the scriptures say, that fire and brimstone shall rain down upon the habitation of the wicked. All right, so that's what the Lord is getting ready to bring. Okay, he's getting ready to bring that, that, that heavy judgment okay and let's see why it says because the guilty must be punished all right and that's what the lord that's what he's all about okay it's just in the apocrypha so let me see i'm gonna get sirach all right sirach chapter 35 and i'm gonna get it in the good news translation all right the lord is all about justice okay this is sirach chapter 35 and let me see. Sirach so chapter 35. And let's see. Starting at verse uh, 12. Okay. And it's, and it's entitled God's justice. It says the Lord is fair and does not show partiality. So how could how could he allow a nation of people to to beat on, destroy, all right, whip, oppress a nation of people for hundreds of years and never, um, you know, never do anything about that. All right. That would be showing partiality. That would be unjust. 
Okay, and it says in Proverbs 11 and 1 that an unjust balance is an abomination to the Lord. It says he is not prejudiced against the poor. When someone prays who has been wronged, the Lord listens. All right, and, and he told himself that they have greatly offended. Okay, at the time when, when, when Jacob's iniquity had an end, they, what did they keep doing? They kept on oppressing. They kept on, you know, shedding the blood of, of the Israelites. Okay, it says when orphans and widows pour out their prayers, he does not ignore them. Okay, who represents the orphans and the widows? Jacob. Okay, it says the tears running down a widow's cheek cry out in an accusation against the one who has caused her distress. Okay, it says serve the Lord willingly and the Lord will accept you. Your prayers will reach the skies. The prayer of a humble person goes past the clouds and keeps on going until it reaches the Lord Most High, where it stays until he answers. All right, so it doesn't go away. It stays until he answers by seeing that justice is done and that the guilty are punished and the Lord will act quickly. He will show no patience with wicked people. All right. Who's the border of wickedness? Esau. All right. It says he will take vengeance by crushing the heathen. He will completely wipe out the merciless and the arrogant and will destroy the authority of the wicked. He will give each of us what our thoughts and actions deserve. Because of the Lord's mercy, his people will be happy when he has judged their case. All right, and that's exactly what it is. We're, we are giving the testimony of Yahweh Shai. All right, we, we are uh, out there on the highways and byways giving a testimony against the wicked, all right, and also against the Gentiles, okay? And when I say the Gentiles, I mean the two-thirds of our people, the, the Israelite foreigners, all right, who are still in a Gentile state of mind. We're testifying against all the wickedness that they're doing on the face of the earth, man. All right? Says, uh, because of the Lord's mercy, his people would, would be happy when he has judged their case. In times of trouble, his mercy is as welcome as rain after a long drought. All right, so something that we long for, okay? Um, let's, I want to get this right quick, where it says uh, right here, he will completely wipe out the merciless and the arrogant and will destroy the authority of the wicked. Okay, they're completely merciless and completely arrogant. All right, let's get, um, let's get Psalms 123 and 4, okay? They're completely arrogant about all the evil that they've done. They, there's no remorse. All right. No mercy. This is Psalms 123 and 4. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. All right. Who is that? Esau, even they're constantly coming around mocking, scoffing. Pull up your bootstraps, you know, making it seem as though all the history of all the things they've done, like, like we just seen in the video, destroying, you know, so-called uh, black settlements. All right. Destroying any kind of a uh, semblance of prosperity that, that Jacob could have, they come in and they, they kill all the people and they set the town on fire, all right? And they do stuff like build a lake over it. Okay, this is Psalms, the 73rd chapter, all right? In verse 5, it says, They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasseth them about as a chain, compasseth them about as a chain, and violence covereth them as a garment, all right? That's their ways, arrogant and violent, okay? It says, their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than their heart could wish. Okay, Edomites, man, they're living in, in complete pleasure and luxury for the most part. Now, you know, we're starting to see, uh, because Esau, you know, the elites are really uh, even oppressing some of their own people. So we're starting to see a lot of more homeless Edomites, Edomites on drugs and all these different things out on the streets. All right. But for the most part, you know, their lives for the past few hundreds of years and even before that have been mostly in pleasure. All right. You know, the wicked who have their portion in this life, as it says in uh, Psalms 17 and 13 and 14. Okay, but then you went on Psalms 17, 73 and 8. It says, they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. So, all right, they are corrupt and speak wickedly. Concerning oppression, they speak loftily, okay, meaning proudly, arrogantly. All right, no mercy, complete pride, arrogance. All right, you know, that that's 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 how these devils are. Okay. All right. Let's let's get a few more scriptures. Um. Let's see. Let's see. Let's get. Uh. Let me think. Let's get Psalms twelve and five. All right. And I'll get ready to close out soon. But this is you know just another another uh event of of history. Okay. Where we can see the true horns of the wicked man, the true horns of of the devil. This is Psalms chapter twelve and verse five. It says, "For the oppression of the poor." Okay. That's us, Jacob. For the sighing of the needy, all right, the men that are sighing and crying for all the abominations that we've done in the midst thereof, okay? It says, Now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. All right, so the Lord said, I'm going to arise, 
you know, for the oppression of the poor, the oppression of my people. All right. The Lord has chosen the poor. All right. He says, now I'm getting ready to arise. All right. Against those who are causing that distress to my people. Okay. He says he's going he, so he's, he's going to send his son, Yahawashai. And what is Yahawashai going to do? All right. Yahawashai is going to bring that judgment, man. All right. Let's get this Psalms uh, 72 and 4. I believe it is. Let's see. Yep. It says, he shall judge the poor of the people, all right? He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor, okay? Why? Because the children of Israel are constantly crying out to the Lord. This isn't a prophecy. If you're not, see, if you're not crying out to the Lord, you're comfortable in Babylon the Great, then most likely you're probably not part of the elect, all right? This is uh, Isaiah chapter 19, okay? Isaiah chapter 19 and verse uh, 19, it says, in that day, there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. Okay, that's us being out there on the highways and byways. Okay, we're out, us being out there prophesying, preaching the word. That's our that's our spiritual sacrifice that we're offering up to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness. Okay, because we're witnesses of the testimony of Yahweh Shai, the spirit of, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, spirit of prophecy. All right. Okay. So we're witnesses unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, all right? Pharaoh and the modern day Egyptians, that's Esau. And he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. So no man is going to deliver us, all right? It's going to be Yahweh Shai. He's coming back as an angelic force, all right? Ready to bring that, that great destruction, okay? Riding up with, with the thousands of heaven, okay? He's going to invade Babylon the Great. And bring that great destruction to Esau Edom, the so-called, you know, the so-called white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of. All right. Let's uh let's see. Let's get this right quick. Okay. How shall he's, he's gonna bring complete and utter destruction, all right, to the wicked man. Okay, and this is the patience and the faith of the saints. All right, let's go ahead and get that right quick. All right, Revelation. I'm gonna close out with that. Revelation. Chapter 13 and verse 10. All right, and it says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints who are the Israelites. All right, so I'm going to end it with that. Lord's will is edifying. Okay, you know, this is a little quick uh, history lesson, you know, and then, of course, going into prophecy. All right, and, and the mindset of how the elect should feel all right you know pretty much looking forward to the destruction to the downfall all right of the wicked the downfall of our enemies matter of fact i'll close out with this so rock 25 i believe it is let's see okay so rock kept 25 boom okay and seven it says there be nine things which i have judged in mine heart to be happy and the tenth will i utter with my tongue a man that have joy of his children and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. All right, Lord's will we be those men. All right. So, hey, but the way it's looking, that, that very well may be, man. All right. For the Lord said that all these things shall pass in this generation. Okay. So, anyways, with that being said, I'm going to close out. All praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or All right. Double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether we're here or whether they forbear. All right? Shalom and a Bible ball.